for taking a stand for righteousness. Holy Spirit's been calling the church back to the fear of the Lord. And, and it's, it's, it's really a um, critical season that we're in. In, in. in Romans 16, 20, it says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, under my feet. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with us. And that word shalom is, it, and actually, uh, what's her name? Jane Hammond always says this. And then in the Hebrew, because I wrote it out, is what shalom means. Where it says the God of peace, that word is shalom. And I heard it first from Jane Hammond, says that peace is the destroyer of authority attached to chaos. So peace is the destroyer of authority attached to chaos. This peace isn't like just everything's nicey-nice. It's a warring word. The peace of God, the shalom, the rest that we know we're walking in obedience with Holy Spirit. We're here. And I don't mean being mean. I don't mean being judgmental, like, like nasty to people. I'm talking about knowing who you are in Christ, walking in, in the authority that God has given us. And to, you know, like I was watching uh, something online um, on TV. It was a dumb movie. And, but they're like, we're the Ku Klux Klan, and, and we are doing this in the name of God. I'm like, oh, let, come over here and let me slap you. And that, I mean, come on. The, the, the Ku Klux, in the name of the Lord? See, but that's the deception of the enemy. <laughs> you know. Anyway, so the shalom, the peace, it's, it's like, Lord, remove any deception. You know, I want that peace of God. God wants us to have peace. He doesn't want us to have a militant attitude towards each other. The devil is the enemy, not people. Right? And that's where we can, we can learn to agree to disagree, but honor each side. And I know it's easier said than done. But we have to maintain it. Have, study Jesus. What was his character like? What was his attitude like? How did he behave? You know, he didn't, he didn't call people names and point them out and call them, you know. I mean, the religious, he called them, you know, vipers and whitewashed tombstones and everything else. And, you know, but that's what the Lord didn't like was the religious. And so anyway, and I said, Lord, I just want to be, have a pure relationship before you. And how long have we been crying out for the glory, for the for rent open the heavens, oh God, for the breaker to come? That's for all of us. And he loves it. And during worship, I just kept hearing him say, I love my people so much. That's what I kept hearing. I love my people so much. He's not unhappy with us. You're all here. You got up early to come here for an eight, nine o'clock in the morning service. Are you kidding me? So, so um, you know, he loves us very much, and he wants us to know he's on our side. Listen, the scripture uh, in Isaiah, um, let's see here. Oh, did I take it out? Isaiah 42, 13, in the, Amplified, it says, in the Amplified, it says, The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal like a man of war. He will shout out, yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail mightily against his enemy. He's going out before us. It's not us doing this in our own strength. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Above all, guard your affections, your emotions, for they influence everything in life. We have to guard that. God is going before us, but he's saying, listen, don't let the door be open where the enemy can come in and wreak havoc in your life because of your mouth that's not sanctified. Because you're, you're, you're putting down or you're always, you know, talking about everybody's fault find, you know, faults in their lives. Well, look at your own stuff. Stop. Where are you growing? Where, where's the fruit in your life? And so, I mean, listen, that's what the Lord says to me, okay? So that's why I'm careful now. <laughs> So he gets back, he gets on my, he doesn't let me get away with anything. In Ephesians 6, 17, it says, we become equipped with the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God. So if you want that transformation, and I know we know this, meditate on the word. Are you daily meditating on the word? We can even put together a, a daily Bible reading. You know, like I remember somebody telling me, read a Psalms, read Proverbs, read a, a, a chapter from the New Testament, and you're good, you know, and then progress from there. If you haven't ever, we can even teach, if you don't know, for those of you who are new, we can teach you how to study. You have Blue Letter Bible. You have Bible Hub. There's so many resources now online that are so easy. There's no excuse for, to look things up. But God is asking us to, to, to sanctify ourselves. And I'm going to close with this. I'm doing good on time. Psalms 18, 31 through 33 says, For who is God but the Lord? Who is a rock except our God? The God who encircles me with strength and makes my way blameless. 
He makes my feet like hind's feet, able to stand firmly and tread safely on the paths of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. And so that's what God wants us to do. He's saying, who is God? He, he's our rock, right? He's the one that encircles us with strength. See, because again, getting back to passivity, how, what, what's the progression of this? I still have 10 minutes. What's the progression of this? He infiltrates our mind, the enemy, with lies. Our emotions, remember the Bible says guard our emotions. So it's like, you know what? That person's a real dick. And I don't like them. And, or they're exaggerating. Or they lied. And so then he attempts to water the seeds with more lies about that. And then what happens is you start getting angry and you start developing a hard heart, right? I mean, we know the, the, the process. And then, uh, you know, and then the Lord, you know, will try to convict us, and then the enemy tries to get us into that carnal mindset. And the Lord is saying to us, don't do it. Don't do it. And when you start entering into that cycle, stop it. Renounce it. Say, ooh, because it's going to happen. I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. But then just stop it and repent and just say, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to act like that. You know, it's funny. You know, I saw something pop up, and I'm like, it did. I said, ooh. And the Lord said, ooh. He says, what are you doing? I said, you know, because he knew what I meant, oof, man, you know, and I didn't say it, I didn't say it, but I thought it, <laughs> and I thought, ugh, and the Lord said, that's what I'm talking about, I'm like, even this, God, come on, and he said, yes, he said, they're still my people, I'm telling you, he really got on my case this week, and um, so, I, you know, I just said, well, Lord, I surrender, and I said, I, I, I welcome your conviction, I welcome it. Because you don't know what you don't know, and, and I don't want, um, you know, I don't want to be deceived. I, I don't want, you know, to be in that boiling pot of water and not realize the fire has been turned up, right? It's like, Holy Spirit, show me. The Bible says, those whom he loves, he disciplines. And again, he loves us so much, and that's what I kept hearing during worship, how much he loves us. But he wants us to be a sanctified people. I said, Lord, I want my mouth sanctified. God. I, you know, I just, you can stand. I'm going to just pray. Lord, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you that we're entering into this double grace. Grace, grace, that we can shout to the mountain of opposition and you will become a mere molehill. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your mercy over us and how much you love each and every one of us. And you're not displeased with us. You're just guiding us. You're just course correcting us. And because you want us to operate in all that you have for us. Just like as a parent, we want our children to excel and to operate in all that you have for them. To do good. So, Lord, we just thank you for everyone here, for their faithfulness. For those watching online, for your faithfulness. Don't let the enemy condemn you because that's never of the Lord. He convicts. He doesn't condemn us. And so, God, what you're doing is wooing us into a deeper place of communion with you. And so we say yes. Could you just say yes, Lord, if you want. I surrender to you. Lord, I, I give you permission to convict me. And I, and I ask you to sanctify my thought process and my mouth. And Lord, I ask you to guide me and, and direct me and give me strategy like I've never had before. So, Lord, I just pray uh, for all of us that you're drawing us. During worship, I saw a humongous um, magnet, like a, you know, the, like a horseshoe magnet, and he was pull, drawing all of us. It was just a picture I saw closer and closer into that holy of holy place. He was giving us permission. He was saying, come, I'm drawing you in. My magnetic presence is pulling you. I'm drawing you in. Just say yes to that. See, and he will help us. We're not doing this in our strength. It's, Lord, I surrender and I yield. But, Lord, we choose to obey your word. We choose to worship you. Lord, I bless each and every person here. I thank you for everyone, for all that you're doing within our lives and how we are excelling and moving forward in you. And I thank you for Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, we're entering into a season with the Holy Spirit. Woof of the unction of Holy Spirit unlike anything we've ever experienced before. I'm telling you, that's the word of the Lord. 
And we say yes to that, God. And I bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen.